Shout to Your Hearts, it's Kat, and today we're talking about rejection and criticism. So sometimes you need a little solace to get you through. Um, don't usually drink in the studio, but I thought it would be a really good way to begin. Um, rejection and criticism are something every artist knows something about. I've certainly had my share of rejection and criticism through the years, and I've been doing art all my life. And um, so I wanted to share some of those things with you today to let you know you're not alone and to give you some tips and ideas about how to deal with that um, because we do face it and let's, you know, let's be clear there's a lot of bullying on the internet and a lot of criticism that goes on there too. So perhaps this will help a little bit. First of all, um, you can't stop people from criticizing you, but you can control how you feel about it and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, I think probably my worst day was three rejections in one day. We had driven down to Santa Fe looking for a gallery um, to represent me and uh, a museum to put my work in and had three appointments spread out through the day. Went to every single one of them and I was rejected by all of them, all in one day. It was kind of a tough day if you can imagine. Had some wine and had a really nice meal, but still, you know, you were expecting something different, right? had a lot of criticism that day too and um, you know one of the things that that I heard is uh, my work is too pretty uh, my work is unoriginal my work isn't original enough um, it's too representational it's way too abstract so got all of that um, and then there's also this the idea about my signature you know how I like to sign my name right on the piece and so so many times I can't tell you at shows and things like that people will come up and say where's the artist and they're looking around for a man they they tell me you know I, I thought it was a guy because of your signature my signature is just really bold and I just throw it right on the front of the work so um, anyway so people sometimes think I'm a man oh well you know that's the way it goes um, criticism okay the other thing that I've been criticized for and if you're a mixed media artist you might be criticized about this as well is that I'm just too all over the place if I could figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up and became an artist if I wanted to be a painter or if I wanted to be a book artist or if I wanted to just draw um, that would be make it so much easier for me to find representation well, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> this ancient artist is just not gonna settle on one thing, you know? That's just not the way my muse works. She sees something and she wants to create that. What we need to remember about criticism, it's about the other person. It's about the critic, not about us. It's not about us at all. It comes from their point of view, from their filter. That's what we have to remember and wrap our heads around that. The minute something is said, go right to that place it's from that person and from their filter it's not about me a lot of people will say you've got to get a, a, a thick skin you've got to toughen up if you're going to be an artist or if you're going to be a performer or a writer do something that you know is, a, is an art of some kind you've got to be really you know tough and you've got to have a thick skin I don't agree with that at all and I, it's a quote by Eric Matzel and I keep it in my studio to remind me and it says an artist feels vulnerable to begin with and yet the only answer is to recklessly discard more armor so you cannot unless unless you're coming from that place of vulnerability you're not creating great art you're not you're not moving people when they see it the whole point is that they look at your work and feel some emotion when they see it i've got a joke for you so a young artist is exhibiting work for the very first time and a well-known critic is in attendance the critic says to the artist would you like to hear my opinion of your work yes the artist replies it's worthless the critic says I know, the artist says, but let's hear it anyway. Okay, so that's, that's the way you have to take it. You have to realize that criticism is absolutely worthless. I also have a personal story to share with you. And um, this story is, um, takes place when I was about 11 or 12. And you have to understand, in my family, um, we, we all had particular roles. And I was definitely the artist in the family. My cousin was the writer. And our, our grandparents, you know, fostered this. And my grandma, Millie, used to send me to art camps and to art lessons every summer. And this one camp was, was actually a class, I think, that an artist who 
was a well-known artist at the time. Believe me, I don't remember his name now, but anyway, he, um, he used to hold classes for children. And so just to get into his class, we had to bring our portfolio, which for an 11 and 12 year old, wow, that's really, you know, something, you know. Um, and so we brought our portfolios and, you know, we're accepted in the class. And uh, the very first day of class, um, we're there and we're all, he set up a still life. It was a still life drawing class. And he set the still life up and he gave us all paper. So we all sat, you know, at, at our chairs with our boards paper strapped to the board or at an easel and you know very excited very first drawing 15 minutes real quick sketch so we all were all sketching and of course we were, this is our first day and I really wanted to impress him I think probably everybody else did too and um, so we finished the drawings up he says okay time's up and he comes by and he picks up every single drawing from every student and instead of pinning them to the wall to talk about them he walked over to the trash can and he ripped them in half and threw them in the bin. And that's the way my mouth went and every other kid in the room, our mouths just hung open. And he said, lesson number one, never be attached to your work. Being attached to your work means that you are holding on with both hands. You can't receive because you're holding on. You can't let go. So. Attachment creates this approval-seeking nature that perpetuates criticism and rejection. So you have to just let go. Uh, when, you, when you let go, you receive creativity and your work sells. It's prosperous because, you know, to me, it's like children. You know, you've created it. It's this thing you've created. You want it to go find its own home. You want it to live happily ever after. You want people to appreciate and admire it. And you have to let go in order for that to happen. When you're ready to release your work and you just let it go, then you recognize the fact that it, it just comes through you. It's not you. It's not a part of you. It stands on its own merit. It sits by itself. It has nothing to do with you any longer. You're the artist. You created it, but it's the work. Releasing attachment and just letting it go and being okay. Remember that story that I told you about that I had the three rejections in one day? It was a pretty crummy day. So we drove back up to Taos and just, I surrendered it. I just let it go. I thought, okay, you know, the universe knows what I want. I want a gallery representation. I'd love to be in a museum. I just, I want to be represented. And so I just let it go and thought, okay, we're just going to have a, have a nice glass of wine, have a wonderful dinner and just relax and let it go. Driving up into Taos, I found this wonderful, gallery store called Two Graces. They represented me for years. It was a wonderful representation and it just goes to show when you release and let go, you just surrender it, the match always appears, the perfect match. So rejection teaches you that the match is on its way. So in closing, there are three things to remember. First of all, you can control the way you feel about it. Remember, criticism is absolutely worthless and it comes from somebody else's filter and it's not about you anyway. And be unattached to your work. Be totally unattached to it. Just let go. And then the last part is be open and ready for the perfect match. It will show up. Okay, well, we're at Chow for now. And um, I wanted to uh, thank you all for all your um, comments and subscriptions. We've had lots of new subbies lately and we really appreciate it. And also, oh, I wanted to um, make sure that um, if you have anything that you want me to talk about, I've been doing this for a long time, just leave it in the comments. Hey, Kat, I want to hear you talk about this or that or whatever, okay? I would love to hear from you. And um, the last thing is, next time we get together, we're going to be talking about transfers and doing some fun transfers. So until then, ooh, ciao for now.